So let's go. It's your music and lifestyle, fashion profile. The entertainment source for everything you want to know about. North to the south, the east to the west side. Stay connected with Ruben Torres worldwide. So let's go. Across the globe, well respected. Beasting on the industry. Connected. Phil Aguilar. Some people call me Dr. Phil. Some people call me the Chief, aka Pastor Phil Aguilar. I'm the pioneer of Set Free Worldwide Ministries, started in 1982, and uh, we've went all around the world. And I'm the last of the Mohicans on this road. My pops, Pastor Phil, has been doing, you know, ministries for over 30 years now. My pops always had his way. I mean, he's an old school, you know, biker, and that's that's been his thing, and it's worked. But, I mean, people see that because it stands out, bikes, leather, tats. Most people at church never rode, don't ride, don't own a Harley or anything like that. You know, whosoever will may come. That's always been his attitude. The door is open. Come as you are. I'm not a neurosurgeon, you know. I'm not a pediatrician with kids, you know. I work in the emergency room. You know, people come in, they're ready to die. They're going down with the count. So I get the defibrillators of life out on them. Fire them back up, you know. I get somebody to, you know, we can mouth to mouth, spiritual resuscitation, bring them back to life. And then I send them over the next ones. More on the outreach, uh, evangelist, um, kind of that style, you know, last stop ministries. Kind of the people that, you know, people turn away. Anyone here ever rooted for the bad guy? Well, it's definitely kind of like that. I look like the bad guys and might do some things like that, stuff like that, but you know what? We're good guys only because of Jesus. God leads me the way I see it. Love people, take them in, feed them, house them for free. And I've always had an invisible sign. If you are sick, broke, distressed, messed up, jacked up, come to me. Well, how about anybody? I mean, it doesn't matter. Single mom, drug addict, alcoholic, whatever the case. You know, they're just someone who wants to get closer to God. In Braves and Venom, when they have nothing, Sephiroth's always been a, what, a real non-profit organization and nobody's ever been charged here. I mean, a hundred thousand plus been to my home. People always tell you, well, you give tough love to people living in your home. I take them in at least. You ain't gonna take them into your home. No matter what, people might not like everything or how it goes down or, oh, I heard this or that, but hey, they've heard about us, they know about us, and you know, there's a lot of people that wouldn't be walking with the Lord today or alive and all that if it wasn't for Separate Ministries, for Pastor Phil and the style we do. He's always had that where he's reached, I mean, any and everybody. Because he has his own background, the way he looks. But once he speaks, you know, he has, you're like, whoa, this guy can talk with anybody. Young, old, he's, you know, he's articulate, he's smart. But he has, he's always been, you know, in touch with the street, too. The set free name, the set free fellowship, and the style that he's been doing for all these years is still, it was, it was ahead of his time back then. And I think it's still ahead of, ahead of his time now where Christians just aren't ready or they're slow or they're scared, whatever it is. But it's always a good old boys club. I don't care if it's the Southern Baptist, I don't care if it's the Church, the Church of God. I mean, a lot of white boys running all these little clubs like that. And it's uh, like, like you used to hear me say before, street gangs are tough. You know, they ask you, hey, where are you from? I say, hey, if you don't answer the right thing, there's gonna be drama. Yeah. Christians just, you know, make a sweet and go, hey brother, where do you fellowship? And if you don't go to the church that's on their top 10 list, you know, you're out of there, you know. Preachers like to talk like, they haven't sinned for so long and everything like that. Or if they do the sin, it's a sin, like I shouldn't judge that person. I mean, you know, there's a reason that every time there's a Christian convention someplace at the hotels, the smut porno movies come out more. And like I said, I've never fallen into sin one time though, Ruben. Never, ever. Never fallen into sin one time. I'll tell you that, I run. All the time. Yeah, I've never fallen into sin. When I go into sin, I premeditate sin. Because I know that the Bible says sin is fun for a season. And if you don't think sin is fun for a season, you, f you haven't found the right sin yet. See, every time I always calculate it. I said, I tell people in my congregation, I've been a church preaching. Preaching against something I know is wrong. And I've been thinking, no, after church, I'm going to be doing this. And i got a battle in my mind going on. I'm preaching to these people, you know, not to do it. But in my mind, I know I'm going to do it. 
and nothing's going to stop me because that's what my flesh wants to do. I'm going to go do it. But uh, I don't say somebody tripped me into sin or I fell or I slipped. Or, no, it's always been a conscious thought. And you know what? It's not that way just with me. It's every man, woman, or young person. We all choose whether we're going to sin, you know, or not. You know, I've been all over the world and it's, like I said, it's still a lot of people are behind or just don't know any better. I have no idea or scared where it's just hard to find a place like Set Free that says what they mean and they might look this way or you heard this or whatever, but you can go anytime and look and I bet you they, they treat you well, they treat you like one of their own. Come as you are, we love you where you're at and we'll grow with you, hopefully you'll grow with us and that you just walk in here and just feel the love and the energy that people have said they get.